Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. I'm Humano IT and I have been a fascinated tech geek since I was a kid. This video took a lot of time, efforts and extensive research to make and produce. So you don't have to. That's why I would really appreciate it if you would leave a like and subscribe to this channel. Today we are installing Kali Linux on the Alienware X17 R2 laptop. It's a complicated procedure, but I promise you, if you follow this tutorial step by step, it will work 100%. Please don't skip any steps I'm showing you. The things that might seem unnecessary to you might be actually very important to a successful installation. Although Alienware systems do not officially support Linux, we will be able to make it work. This laptop is perfectly suited for this operating system because it is a very powerful laptop. I've seen countless articles and videos about how to install these things properly, but every time something didn't work quite well, although I meticulously followed the instructions. So I did my own research and finally after many days of headaches I got it to work perfectly. And if you are having the same issues, by following this guide step by step I guarantee you that Kali Linux will work perfectly with your laptop. So, and to start, what do we need? First, two USB flash drives with a minimum capacity of 16 gigabytes. Secondly, Kali Linux, the <laughs> Third, time and patience. How to install it? The very first thing we have to do is to download the latest version of Kali Linux. Please do this only by using the official website. If you go to their homepage, you will see many versions of Kali Linux. Since we are going to install it on a USB stick, we will choose Live. Now there are three versions of Live Boot. You want to choose the right architecture for your device. Although you can go wrong by choosing 32-bit since 64-bit systems also support 32-bit programs and architectures. But that's stupid since you will leave responsiveness on the table. You might have realized that you won't have a dedicated download button here, but you will be able to download it via torrent. I suggest using MicroTorrent, it's free and a user-friendly program. Once you install MicroTorrent, you will be able to download Kali Linux. The download will start automatically after you open the downloaded torrent link from the official Kali Linux website. The complete version of Kali Linux has around 12 GB, so it could take up from a couple of minutes to many hours, depending on your internet speed. So just get a break, take a coffee or take a nap. Now we are ready to transfer the ISO file onto your USB flash drive. We do this with a program called Balena Etcher. It's free and very user friendly. My cat could do this too, trust me, it's very easy. Plug in your flash drive, open Balena Etcher and select your ISO and click flash. After it's done, we want to boot into the flash drive, but before we do this, we want to enable NVIDIA Optimus in the BIOS settings. So go into your BIOS by pressing F2 and activate your integrated graph because otherwise Linux won't start since it does not recognize your NVIDIA graphics card. There are two different types of graphics card drivers for Linux operating systems, free and proprietary drivers. The free NVIDIA drivers are called Nouveau in Linux. These don't work right with the RTX 3080 Ti laptop. That's why we have to use the integrated Intel graphics first. Only then we will be able to install the original NVIDIA drivers. We also want to change some other settings in the BIOS, otherwise Kali won't even attempt to start. You want to plug in your second still empty USB flash drive. I use a 256 GB SSD and also an ethernet cable which goes directly from your router to your PC. Press F10 to save and reboot your system. Now keep pressing F12 until the boot menu opens and boot into the USB flash drive which we have just created right now. You will be greeted with this blue Kali boot screen. Go down to start installer and press enter. Choose your preferred language and location. Well, this is just self-explanatory. You know what I mean. Now after you've done that, it's detecting your flash drives and medias, as well as your network settings. You have to have an ethernet cable inserted, otherwise the installer won't recognize your internet network card. And I'm not talking about the Wi-Fi card. 
that's a completely different story. We will get there too later in this video. So plug in an ethernet cable to have access to the internet. Choose no, just click continue here. Choose admin one, create a password. Now it's detecting all of your installation medias. Select the option guided use the entire disk. Disclaimer, I'm not responsible for you losing all of your data if you accidentally select the wrong drive. Be careful and open your eyes while you select your installation medium. Check multiple times if the selected disk is also the one you truly want to be flashed with Kali Linux. I use an external SSD since these are heaps faster than traditional USB flash drives. This results in a much much faster installation than on USB sticks. The amount of time you will save is substantial, so invest in an external SSD, trust me. You don't want your installation to go for 2 hours. So then select the drive you want Kali Linux installed on. Then select the first option. Then finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Then continue. Click yes. Now go take a nap or drink a coffee. Now it's done, let's unplug the first USB drive from your computer and restart your PC while pressing the F12 button. Now we want to boot into Kali Linux. Enter your credentials and we are ready now to install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. I made this text file so you will be able to just copy and paste the commands in your terminal. The first two commands will just update your whole Kali Linux. It's mandatory having an updated system before actually installing important drivers such as graphics drivers. The next two commands will download required development packages for installing the NVIDIA drivers. The next command will tell you on which bus your graphics cards are located. These numbers tell the PC where they live, so to speak, on the main board. You want to replace my buses with your buses. How? Just by looking at these numbers with LSMod you will see all installed modules and drivers. The next command will enable you to, to detect your NVIDIA card correctly. Both of these commands will tell you on which bus your graphics cards are located. You want to replace my buses with your buses. How? Just by looking at these numbers. These numbers tell the PC where they live, so to speak, on the main board. This will block the pre-installed free NVIDIA Nuvo drivers when booting into Kali Linux. Let's update the kernel and reboot. Now we check if we successfully block the Nivo drivers. Download the official NVIDIA drivers from NVIDIA.com and put it in the downloads folder. This is important. Please make sure that it's actually in the downloads folder. Otherwise the next commands won't work. Now we want to change into a debug mode where you will be able to uninstall graphics drivers properly. To enable this terminal you have to press Ctrl, Alt and F2 button. Then log in with admin1 and your chosen password. The next two commands will remove the integrated intergraphics drivers. Now after we've uninstalled the integrated graphics we need to uninstall the NVIDIA drivers too. Let's now change directory and go into our downloads folder where our downloaded drivers are. Next, we have to gain administrative privileges on the folder before we can actually install the file. With this command, we install the NVIDIA graphics drivers. Click yes. Once it's done, update the kernel and reboot your PC. Now we want to disable NVIDIA Optimus. So let's go back into the BIOS and do this. This means that we want to use the NVIDIA cards only. We don't want any intergraphics no more. We want to change into the debug mode again. Here you will be able to uninstall the NVIDIA graphics driver for the second time. This time we install the NVIDIA drivers together with the CUDA drivers too. Click yes. Now let's remove the integrated intergraphics from the module list too. And also the free NVIDIA Nuvo module. Reboot and check your final installation with the following commands. You can even run some benchmarks with Hashcat. Now you might wonder why we had to install the NVIDIA drivers two times. I'm honest, I don't know, but that's the only way I got it to work. So just do it two times and you're good. 
So let's now install the Wi-Fi drivers. This laptop has the Intel Killer AX1675. Update your Linux with these two commands, followed by this command. This lets you install essential packages for developing programs. Think of it like a baseline. Get your installer from this side, change directory, execute this command, get this file now, change directory, compile the drivers with these commands. Update the kernel, reboot and you're done. That's it for this video. Please let me know in the comments if you like what I do. I really enjoy making these videos for you to solve problems. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye.